Good morning. Good morning, my sisters and brothers. One of the most beautiful things in life is the act of kindness. The act of kindness is just an energy, like looking inside of the mirror, but without the eyes, without the ears, and without any words. There's a feeling of comfort, a feeling of tranquility, tenderness, and love. It's like grabbing a born baby in your arms with no story at all, with no agenda at all, just a pure love. So when you close your eyes and you begin to feel the dream of kindness, it's because there are no words creating it. It's just the delivery of your heart, like the warm blood caressing all the body, making it come alive so it can express itself and create the art from the heart. So when you begin floating in the river of life, you begin seeing everything that you begin identifying to deliver your kindness and love. And you got all the temptations to go against yourself. I remember the temptation when I used to go against myself 100%. It was like an addiction, like a bad habit. It is like you want to change your life. You want to jump dreams. And you use the kindness against yourself. How did this get used? Well, it's self-sacrifice. When you begin manipulating yourself with everything that you see, everything that you have tasted, everything that you, you know, the desire that you want to be free, but you create all these stories that's stopping you from being you. So in this dream of addiction, this dream of the negative habits, we create this beautiful kindness, corrupting way, and then when we begin giving it away, something happens. It begins having an expectation. Just because we're kind, the world's going to be kind to us? No. The world does what it does. What we are mastering is to be kind with ourselves, to not use the things in life that make us irritated. And when we get irritated, we're like a snake, you know. We bite, and then after we bite, we have all this guilt and shame and give in. Sacrifice ourselves because we feel guilt. We feel shame. We feel all this negativity in us, then we give in, say, I'm guilty. I'm not worth for love. I'm not worth for my dreams. And this is a negative habit that we all create. And especially when this becomes being a language of gossip and hatred and the self-abuse. And self-abuse, what it is to complain about ourselves, to complain when we're not happy, to complain and not do nothing about it. It's like letting something, you know, take over it in our kind heart because getting buried and buried, buried because it's not allowed to be happy. And if it just feels happy for a little bit, you begin saying, it's okay. Can I do this? Can I express myself? This is the thing that we have to change in our programming. It's okay to be happy. It's really okay with no story at all. There's no hidden agenda to be happy. It's just a kindness to oneself. And when we begin feeling that kindness to ourselves, we begin identifying everything that we use in life to be unkind with ourselves. Because when we are unkind with ourselves, that gives us the permission to be unkind with everybody else, and that becomes our life. The moment that we begin having the kindness to our heart is because we want to change our life. We want to change the negative dream. We don't want to feel guilt and shame anymore and do things that, you know, irritate us. And then we scream, then we do negative acts. And then from that point on, we begin repeating the negative habits again. Because what? We sacrifice ourselves again. And that's not spirituality. That is not healing. That it is just being enabled by our own self, by our own words. Not wanting to go forward. Feeling all the fear in creating an island of safety. An island of safety in the Totec tradition is where we're just living in a pain that we're used to. Why even dream beyond this? We just accept life and just punish ourselves and, you know, fear God, fear life. But I tell you, there's nothing to do to fear God or fear life. We have to love life. Fear God, because God is creation. This is creation. You are creation. My brothers and sisters are creation. We all are the most beautiful creation that ever existed. And you know what the beautiful thing it is? That we can say thank you in our kind heart from within. And we did not even have to know what created us. Because if it's that important, if it's that important to know what created us, don't you think whatever created us, we can just step into our self-being close our eyes and say thank you. And when we say thank you, it's not with the words that we express. It's by the act that we let this heart be kind to all its being and then wake up 
and not this thing that we used to be on kind of using life and then it's a sleeping dream. When we wake up, let's make an act of power to be kind with everybody outside of us, even if they're not kind to us or to themselves. Let's break the spell in humanity and rise up to the occasion, the occasion of delivering the art from the heart. Kindness is one of the most beautiful things. Let's break the cycle, the cycle of the negative habit of hurting ourselves by hurting the people that we love. And when we do that, we sacrifice our dreams. Why? Because we don't have right to be happy. How can we be happy if we just commit this awful thing? Let's break the spell of self-judgment. How can we grow if we don't let the spell of self-judgment go? How can we grow spiritually if we continue judging ourselves for everything that we do think? Everything is life. The most beautiful thing about the artist is making decisions of what colors to use, not get overwhelmed that there's so many colors to use. Let's use the colors that we want and identify what colors we don't want in life anymore because we're just creating memories at the end of the day. Could you imagine just create all our life? The dream how we used to sacrifice our creative heart. But when we get identifying what sacrifice our creative heart, what do we use, what colors do we use, we don't need to use those colors anymore. Why? Because we have awareness. And when you have awareness, you don't have to return to that room just to prove a point. You hear what I mean? We don't have to prove to the outside world that we're ready to let go of a dream. There's nothing to prove. There's no diploma to have. There's no acknowledgement or validation from the outside. When you wake up from a dream, from a nightmare, that's the resurrection that all the mystery schools, the religions talk about. They don't talk about, you know, <laughs> you die and then you come back in another life form, another body. Who cares about that? They're just telling kids stories. So it doesn't get panic, so it doesn't have fear, so it comes down and has a night's sleep. It's time to respect ourselves, to not live in the superstition because resurrecting in all the traditions is resurrecting in the same life. Like how many times have we died? Not physically, but an old dream has gone away. And when we don't let that dream go away, it just continues haunting us. What could have been instead of what it is happening, what we can do right now, not what we could have done. I was happy over there. I was happy over here. But does anybody says I'm happy right here? Because right here is where happiness and unhappiness comes. We just stand our ground. There's no promised land. There's no running away. You cannot run away from yourself, from your own creative half. And when you have your own creative mind, you notice that you're dreaming all of the time and that brothers and sisters are also dreaming their dream. Why feel in competition to go with them or try to feel in a higher position than them? You know, there are so many levels of awareness. Many people tell you what they want to live, but they don't want to see how they stop themselves because of the ego and the personal importance. You know, I even see great masters continue on their search and their quest to be the perfect guru, the perfect teacher, because it's easier to go to school than to practice what you have learned. And the school is the school of life. So spirituality for me is to enjoy my life, not to have a pedestal, not to sit in it. You know what I mean? is to resurrect in the same life. That's why I came to spirituality. And there's so many temptations that would take you away from that, but the honor, it is for you to live in your comfortableness. Like, I don't like to be irritated and scream at myself and the people that I love and then feel guilt and sacrifice whatever I was going to do because I did an act of cruelty and then we can enable, you know, that it becomes a negative habit and nothing grows, nothing changes. It's like that meditation of the quack the duck, the sacred duck. I wanted to learn the secret of life from the master duck. <laughs> and then when I got to the master duck, he said to me, what you want? I want to know the secret of humanity. And he began quacking, quack, 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 and nothing changed. And what does that, that mean? That teaching was that we can talk all we want about what we're going to do, what we're going to do when we're free, the change that we're going to do. But if we don't act, it is just a quacking and nothing changes. The moment that we don't quack, the moment that we feel the kindness in our heart, we feel no excuses, no justification, just what we really want to do in life. 
And could you imagine being honest with yourself, not running away, not replacing dreams, just waking up inside your life, inside your dream, and saying, what kind of life do I want from right here and to the day that I go home? And what is it I do not want? It's the simplest decision. Now comes the hard part for many people is to take the act and stick to the plan and be loyal to your own words. You know, one of the most beautiful things that I felt in, in the in story, in teaching, was my father. When he come out of his heart attack, he said when he was in coma for those nine weeks that he had this dream, that he came out of his body like a little spear and he was broken out from the earth and come into the universe, and then all this little spear, that was his point of perception, landed on this planet. And on that planet there were so many people dressed in white, waiting for the Savior, and they had a crown, you know, they had a sitting chair for the Master to come sit down, and when he arrived, everybody was waving, said, Oh, Master, you have finally come. You have finally come to be with us and guide us. He sees the whole dream and goes, I don't think so. I'm just here passing by. This is not my dream. I don't want to get trapped in that chair, in this dream. Everybody is responsible for themselves. And this is the most respectful thing that I can say to everybody here. We all have our own life. This is not my dream. I don't want that prison for myself. I don't want that chair. I don't want to people think that I'm better or worse than. We all are the same. And in that moment, he woke up to another dream. But the teaching that he gave to me there is that many people may have expecting us what we're going to be in life, what we need in life. The only person who knows that is the artist that is creating the art, and it's you and me. You and me are the creators, the artists of our own life. There's no more people to blame for what we're doing or not doing. There's people to say thank you for inspiring us, but those people who are inspiring us, they're not gonna create our art. Could you imagine? I like this guitar player, I'm like, okay, come, come create my art with your talent. No, it's creating his own art. No one owns our art either. But together, we can play in a band. We can take time when it's our turn to share what is in our heart. And here's what I'm talking about this week. To be kind to your heart, to be kind to yourself, to give the permission to yourself to let go of what doesn't serve you anymore. That's why I talk about resurrection in the same life, because we let go of what we think that we needed to be happy, what we needed to be in love. The only thing we need is to be alive. And hello, we've been alive for a long time, haven't we? Been stuck in the nightmare by not believing in ourselves. Hello, you're not alone here. We all go through suffering, through guilt and shame, and we wake up saying, no, thank you, because that is not my dream. I don't need to be perfect for you or for anybody else. The only one I need to be loyal to is for the love of my life. Because when I'm loyal to the love of my life, I can be loyal to my family and calm my poison and I poison my family. And I poison the loved ones that I love. And it's because I begin controlling my irritation. Because the irritation, it is the moment of creation, the creation of a nightmare, the creation of guilt and shame. Because when you're irritated, you have to poison in your hands to hurt whoever is in your presence. And when you begin hurting who's in your presence, that is going to get back to you because it's a dream of hurting one another. That's the world of the gods, the world of belief, the world of not forgiving and letting go. Humanity will do what it does, it's nature. That's why I say humbly, let go of those judgments. Let go of that grudge. It doesn't serve you anymore. What serves you is your kindness to yourself to resurrect in life, to resurrect that artist within, and to begin being impersonal with yourself. Because when you're impersonal with yourself, it's like an out-of-body experience. It's like you come out of your body and you begin seeing yourself without judgments. And can you imagine seeing yourself without judgments? That you can see it like a mechanic sees an automobile and without trying to corrupt it because it's his own car. Because he breaks something else, he has to come back to his own chap or to her own chap. It's time to fix our automobile. This it is, our vehicle in life. Let's not hurt it. Let's not punish it. Let's not break the wheels. Let's keep the body 
with honor. Let's keep the body with gratitude because this body help us to bring the art from the heart, from the infinite to the manifest. This is the best way we can serve Mother Earth by serving our body because our body, it is our Mother Earth. Because when we wake up dreaming inside our body, our mind is this beautiful universe, these beautiful worlds. And the one who's driving it is the one who's dreaming. And guess what? You and me, we are the dreamers. We are the dreamers dreaming our own dream. And then we are like a movie projector. Whatever we're dreaming from within, we're projecting out. That's why I repeat, when we are unkind to ourselves, we're projecting some kindness in life. And then little kids watch us do that. And they think, you know, that we're heading into the right direction, but we're heading over a cliff. That's why it is time to be responsible and take over that, you know, vehicle and drive it to the dream of love. And the dream of love is no destination. It's just a point of view of how you are driving because we're already there. The point of view of where you are walking. We already get our destination. We are alive. We're learning and unlearning. We're getting inspired and letting what uninspired of us go so we can resurrect the angel that we are. This is one of my favorite symbologies in religious. They have in all different forms, from uh, angels, from artistic. They even have it in India in different ways. But the one I have here is he. So you can see the little devil. <laughs> it reminds me of me, not because he has long hair. <laughs> it's because this represents my negativity. This represents my dream of suffering, my victimization, my excuses, my justification how I corrupt my own word. Now this also represents me, my authentic self. When I wake up from the hangover of guilt and shame, of the addiction of suffering, when I want to have a perfect balance of equilibrium with myself in life, to not use words in vain, to not begin using poison, so I keep myself in check. Don't you think I feel this negativity in my life? I feel it. The temptation it is to keep myself very still and tranquil to not believe my own lies. This is yoga for me. Why? Because this is a yoga pose. Don't you, feel, don't you think this feels uncomfortable when you're irritated but you're calming yourself down? You're breathing. You're breathing. You're letting go and this moment will be gone because there's a moment that these two will be one in line in equilibrium once again. When that happens, when you find the equilibrium, you find a message because the message that you did was an art, how to calm yourself down. So all the religions, all the mystery schools for me are ways to figure out how people calm themselves down. That's why many people live in blind faith because they're trying to do what somebody else did, but we have to find our own way because nobody really knows what's inside this head of ours, what negativity exists. And you know, we all are negativity. We don't have to be ashamed of our negativity because that's how we get blackmailed. That's how we get you know, judged. But when you don't blackmail yourself, when you don't judge yourself, you are free. And that's what I mean by the out -body experience. You begin seeing yourself from a different point of view. But now you know what you're using to serve the love of your life and what you're using to hurt the love of your life. There's two things that we have done in life. What feels better for you? For me? This feels better. You know, one of the greatest gifts that I have is my mother, Mama Coco. You know, she just loves being in her own world, in her own dream, and I will always be her cop. And that's one of the beautiful things to know, that she is the representation of Divine Mother of the whole picture for me. And life is life. So how can I thank her for giving me this life? Well, by controlling and giving her son, the most beautiful dream. And the most beautiful dream is just being my authentic self. All the ways that I used to judge myself, remove it. All the ways that I used to make the excuses, you know, remove it. All the ways that I used to hurt Jose, they're not real anymore. Let me start over. That dream is dead. I will not use that to hurt myself or to take anything of excuses that I used to be a certain way because that dream is over. Let us not bring the dead to the new dream. Let us not bring those old 
memories and belief to the new dream? Can we really let those things rest in peace while we are alive? The last time I spoke, I spoke about the dream that I dreamt that I died. Well, that part of me died. And many people who know that corpse, they will tell me, oh, this is how Jose is, this is how Jose is, this is how Jose will be, this Jose will act. And if they come to me to speak to the new me, would I believe them? Of course I will not believe them, even though they are speaking half the truth, because that's the memory that I did or am in their heads, but I'm no longer at that moment because I've changed. And it's easy to change. That's why I say I'm life. You know, forget what race I am, forget what gender I am. I am just life. And I'm here just to express my love without any conditions or how it's supposed to be. And that's how we're all what meant to be too. So just to express our love to ourselves. That's why I said earlier, when you close your eyes, it's about delivering that kindness without thought without hearing anything, without even speaking. They're just embracing the timeless, the timelessness of life, as we can feel it, like a clock in our body, but without words, telling us we're still alive, to do whatever we want to do in life, to start over and let the dream go, so be it today. Let it be the day when our sacred heart communicates to us and we learn to listen by being skeptical of our own negativity and using the kind words that it's using to translate a message to ourselves. And then we begin listening as we open our eyes and we begin dreaming consciously. Whatever we do, just know it's about kindness. When you're feeling unkind, it's not about the words or the stories going on. It's an act that's happening with the energy that we are because we all are energy. And energy will always find a container. Look at the holy grail that we have. Look at your own hands, I invite you. These hands, hold a container. Or if you feel your chest, let the container be felt. This body is holding all of our energy. Now with the gift of the mind, that is the translator from the infinite to the manifest. What are you translating? What stories are you feeling all the kindness and putting it into words and giving it to yourself. And when you know that you're being unkind is when the mind is not being loyal to the body. So I invite you to this training of life because it's a life training. Like my father says, all my life, my body was loyal to my mind. It's time for my body to be loyal to my mind, to be loyal to my body, so my body can be loyal to my mind, and I will live in a dream of loyalness, within loyalness, not using any excuses out there to sabotage myself, but to bring the infinite, the infinite love wherever I go. And you know, when there's infinite love, there's infinite kisses. When there's infinite kisses, you blow the whispers of love going out there, and now, instead of being the gossip <laughs> of negativity, it will be the opposite of gossip, will be the words of love that is the rhythm of the heart being put like seeds wherever they need to be. And wherever you are, that's where you need to be because that's where you are doing your best, sharing the seed of kindness of your heart into this beautiful life, this dream. That's why Father explains in one of his books, I love saying this, and Brother explains it too, Imagine being the only sober person in a room where everybody is completely drunk with their unkindness. They drink so much unkindness that they forget to be kind to themselves and they wake up, wake up with a hangover. I wish I was kind to myself, but they continue doing the same dream. But you wake up and your presence is so powerful that you don't need a pedestal or to be the chosen one. You just need to be there for you at all times in life because that's how we wake up. And the little kids, they learn not what we're doing, learn how we live. So let's show the little ones a whole different way of dreaming, the dream without feeling fear to God, fear to life, sabotaging ourselves and our creative heart. Let's show them the way to be loyal to the heart and to be masters of whatever we create because life is just tenderness, you know? 
Could you imagine loving a beautiful being like this and then it loves you back? Mm. It's the best feeling ever when they look up to you, when they want to be fed, when they want to be loved and nourished. It's the same thing as the body. Mm. Love, the most beautiful dream in this life. And it's on our side. Let's not misuse it. Let's not corrupt it. Let's just be human. And like the puppy is a puppy, we are human. Let's not corrupt our program and resurrect. Because I do believe in resurrection. And I believe in resurrection in the same life. Because we were toddlers. We were just these pure little angels. Then we got hurt. Then we begin hurting. Then we were in a bubble, the dream of humanity, the dream of the planet. And then something happened to us when we wake up to return to be this authentic love. But now we have the awareness of humanity, how they go against themselves and how they come back to power, the power of love. And that's what a yogi is. That's what a shaman is, a curandera, a human of power. It's just a, a force that contains love. Like the puppy, just feel my puppy. No, <laughs> it's just love. He doesn't care to be anything else, just to love and be loved. That's the whole program of our body too. That's why the angel is the, the mind, and the mind is here to take care of heaven. It's time to return home. Mm, dream of kindness. All my love and gratitude. i see you next week, and thank you for your time. Like I said, always, remember your time is precious. Mm, enjoy it. <laughs> Shiva Shakti, <clears throat> Om Sairam, Om Eteo, to spirit, Amen. I'll see you next week. Thank you again for your time. <laughs>